How's it going to you all boys? It is week one of this brand new season where we get to go up against Mississippi State. And right off the bat, take a look at the headline for the game. Number five, Coastal Carolina faces Cupcake Mississippi State to open SEC play. That's crazy that they're calling uh, Mississippi State a cupcake. Uh, before we get into that matchup, let's take a look here at our preseason polls, some Heisman Watch, All-Americans, that sort of stuff. We's come in after winning the national championship, uh, but losing a decent amount of talent at number five in the nation. Texas is at one, Oklahoma two, Penn State three, and Notre Dame four. So Texas we beat in the national championship. Oklahoma was beaten by Texas in the semifinals. We beat Penn State in the semifinals, but had lost to them in the regular season. And Notre Dame, we beat twice last year and we'll play at the end of this year. So we have a lot of history with these uh, top five teams. Rounding out the top 10 is Clemson, Michigan, Miami, our kind of rivals in Georgia, and Nebraska. At least our recruiting rivals. Uh, they play a big game here week one. Uh, we'll just kind of scroll through the rest of the top 25 and a little bit beyond. Uh, I want to say Alabama sitting at only 28th unranked to start this season is the lowest ranked 99 overall team they've not had a great uh dynasty here so far but uh Ole Miss our week two matchup is sitting at 29 so there's some stuff there uh and obviously uh Mississippi State is a cupcake oh man this isn't good how low are they ranked are they bottom 100 oh my gosh they're ranked 98th in the country we have no excuse not to win this game part of the reason why that's true uh we go to the heisman watch two of the top five marquise jackson sitting at that number two spot in radon randell in only his sophomore year sitting at the three spot uh so that's pretty crazy i would love it if one of these two could win it uh preferably marquise it is his senior season you don't see wide receivers get it all that often. Uh, speaking of those guys, Radon is the first team uh, preseason All-American quarterback. I don't think we have a whole lot more. Uh, Kale Mackey, Will Phillips, Logan Smith, and Marquise Jackson. So quite a few guys just not really on the offensive side of the ball in that first team. Do we have any second teamers? I imagine we have at least one. John Taylor is it. So just the uh, defensive tackle who thankfully we convinced to stay for another season. He is uh, 99 overall. Uh, nope, we are not in the ACC anymore. How about the all SEC? Right on is the first team quarterback. JJ Barr somehow first team fullback. Uh, only, at 70, only at 76 overall. Pretty impressive there. Anybody else? Durham Finch, John Taylor. Kale Mackey, Will Phillips, Don Riley, Leon Sandcastle, Logan Smith. Uh, no Marquise Jackson, though. Calvin Alexander, the running back from LSU, gets that uh, returner honor. Is he? Okay. Well, he's a wide receiver on the second team. I don't know which one's a higher honor. Do you want to be the best returner or like the second or third best wide receiver? Uh, but there he is there. And Aaron Jenkins, the free safety, is also a second team all-conference player. So we're looking pretty good there. Uh, okay. Well, we're going to do a little bit of scouting here. Kind of finish off the preseason, see if we have anybody crazy. Michael Royal goes up. So does David Holt, but a lot of these guys have been, honestly, not that impressive of recruits. Ooh, Fred Joseph is a gem. Uh, he looks like a pretty solid defensive end. And so is Mike James at the center spot. That's the guy that you would really love to pick up. Gotta always get that offensive line talent. Michael Gorman goes up as well. And with the last two, Darren Cleveland is a busted tackle. And Joe Douglas, the fullback, 72 overall goes down to a 69. But he's like... Not too far off of where JJ Barr is right now. Uh, not the best acceleration. You would like to see a little bit better. Maybe better run blocking, but he's not terrible. Now, in our episodes, we're not going to pay a whole lot of attention to recruiting this year since we are leaving the team at the end of the season. 
So I'm not going to completely abandon it. We got to keep our legacy intact and make sure that uh, Coastal Carolina uh, stays a powerhouse after we leave. Uh, but we won't show a crazy amount. Maybe some commits, maybe a couple of battles here and there. But for the most part, it's going to be behind the scenes uh, for this season. So then that just leaves us our game. Uh, favorite to win. A, A minus, A plus for us this season on our overalls. Uh, Mississippi State just at that B uh, kind of rating. So they'll be mid to high 80s. Um, we are favored to win this one. Let's just go ahead and see. What are they ranked overall? 86 with an 88 offense and an 87 defense. Really not that impressive. We're just going to wear the standard homes for our first game of the season. Our first game in the SEC. And for Mississippi State, well, what do they have? They've got the away. They've got the alternates. Uh, interesting with the with the gray pants. So they've got just the maroon and the white. They do have an egg bowl helmet, uh, which to me literally just looks like a Minnesota helmet. <laughs> and then they've got the white jersey, the maroon, the egg bowl, and the TK Martin jersey. They've got the TK Martin pants. The white pants, the maroon pants, and the gray pants, and the egg bowl pants. What does their full egg bowl loadout look like? I feel like I haven't actually seen that. Uh, I don't mind it. Uh, again, it just looks like Minnesota, but uh, pretty interesting. Anyways, they're just going to wear... Uh, we'll have them wear this alternate five. Gray pants, maroon helmet. Change it up just a little bit, uh, but regardless, I think we're just going to beat them down here. Let's see, what are their top players? Ours, uh, John Taylor, Marquise Jackson, Robbie Gray? I don't remember. Uh, but, you know, defensive tackle, wide receiver, and a center. Not the craziest positions for them. It's a running back, a punter, and a middle linebacker. They're at that mid to low 90s overall. Uh, no stats for us to take on yet, but I'm feeling pretty confident. Coming in to the SEC East, we don't have an easy battle in front of us. We can finally knock off Georgia in the regular season. The West looks stacked at the top, uh, and even unranked Alabama looks pretty good. Ole Miss, Mississippi State, maybe not the best, although Ole Miss is ranked like one below Alabama, so that'll be pretty good as we look at a nice little view of the stadium here. And it is a beautiful uh, summer evening here at the new an improved Brooks Stadium. Uh, let's see. Will they win the toss? Uh, they will. Maybe maybe bad luck in the new stadium. Maybe we never win a toss. They're going to elect a kick. So light little five mile an hour breeze today. We'll get this season underway. We will absolutely expect to dominate in this game. And I think it starts right here. Opening the season potentially with a Marquise Jackson kick return for a touchdown. Oh, he doesn't quite have it, but he gets this out to the 30-yard line. That's a great start. And as we open up our final campaign here with the Teal Boys, we're going to see if we can get a little bit of running going. Uh, we don't have the best running backs this season, so I'm curious to see what they can give us. Uh, Mike Fontaine, the true freshman, picks up a couple on that first down. We'll go with a little read option on second down. Let Radon start. Get a little bit of running early. Radon has some blocks and Radon one block away. Not going to pick it up, but we'll get a little stiff arm cheese inside the red zone. 47 yards downfield. Uh, you'll have to see it. We'll see what he can do with his arm now as we'll step back to pass and Ooh, what am I doing? Marquis had 10 interceptions last year. Almost has one on his first attempt this year. We're lucky to get away with just an incompletion as we will keep the ball on the ground again here. Give it to Mike Fontaine. Let the freshman try to pick up some yards. That counter is good for five. We're going to go so far as to say that that was not uh, an optimal pass. Try it again on this third down and we're going to scramble right on. It has enough. No, they say short fourth and one. I didn't want to risk throwing a pick, but now we're in a tough spot. Thankfully for us. We have uh, the all-SEC preseason fullback and J.J. Barr. We're going to hand the ball off to him, try to convert this fourth down up the middle. J.J. has plenty of space, and he has four yards for us as well. I've never been uh, one that really enjoys passing at around the five-yard mark, so we'll keep the ball on the ground again. 
Give it to Mike Fontaine. Let him run for two more. Just inching closer to the goal line. Do it again here on the second and goal. Looking for some blocks. They're not quite there. That was weird running from Mike. Not what I thought was going to happen. He gets just back to the goal line. So here on this third down, I'm taking a risk. We're going with the play action. Oh, man. We don't really have the best tight ends here. Just Purcell. And then I think that's Malcolm Williams in on the other side. And on this third and goal outside the pocket, a risky one. We give it to JJ Barr and he gets into the end zone. So the fullback gets another receiving touchdown in his career here. And we score our first touchdown of the season. We take the lead importantly in this game. So we uh, thankfully open up this new stadium with a nice touchdown. Try to finish it out and we'll see what the defense can do as Mississippi State takes a touchback. Our offense lost uh, maybe a little bit of depth, but the good players got really good. So, you know, they might struggle at times, but I expect they'll be pretty solid overall. It's our defense, though, that I'm going to expect to be really good all season long. These guys stepping back to pass. On second down, they throw it away, and the crowd is kind of lagging our audio out here. Maybe it's that change from uh, 21,000 fans to 80,000 now at max capacity. And user Wilson who replaces Sidney McRae as they throw it up, and Logan Smith, oh, had the interception, but he steps out of bounds. Defense almost creates a turnover on their first drive. Instead, it's a three and out, and Mississippi State's going to have to punt it away to the, arguably the most dangerous man in all of college football. We'll see what kind of field position the offense is going to get to work with. If he gets the corner, well, we're just going to... Be real sad because there's a flag on the play. And this one's probably coming a ways back. Expecting it to be a clipping. No, it's a holding. Not as bad as a clipping, but still back at our own 27. That's not optimal, I'd say. Uh, we can fight back from that. First and 10. It looks like they're bringing pressure, and they are. So outside the pocket we go. And we're going to try to run. And Radon has a lot of space. We'll just dip out of bounds before we take a big hit. We got to keep him healthy this year for sure. I'd say we have a very capable backup this year in David West. He's actually a higher overall than Radon, but we don't want to have to see him in action. Throw up a dangerous one. Again, almost picked off. Malcolm Williams can't come down with it. We are an honestly pretty uh, ugly one of three through the air passing so far in this game as we will step back and again scramble because it's available to us and we're going to use it. Uh... I just don't know. We should have good wide receivers. Our offensive line should be good enough. Just curious how they're not getting open right now. Maybe a little bit of trickeration could be in order. I'm really hoping that this isn't a blitz, but it looks like it's going to be the flea flicker is dropped. Radon picks it up, and it's going to turn into a run. Apparently, we can't pass the ball there, although we were still sacked instead of tackled for loss. I'm not sure. It's second and 15. Uh, freshman running back just not able to pitch the ball back to his quarterback. As weird as it is, this uh, hasn't been a great game so far. Second and 15. Trying the weird little triple option. We'll get the pitch out. Maybe. No, it's on the ground and they've recovered it. Oh, I don't like it. I don't like it one bit. Well, let's just hope that this is the best field position Mississippi State has all game. We're bringing pressure on the safety blitz on this first down. Seeing what we can do. They do go with the run. Logan Smith can't get the tackle, but... Jenkins is there to pull him down after a gain of two. Kind of expecting them to keep running if it's successful. So we'll keep bringing some pressure. It's not as good as I would have hoped. They get two more on the run. And now on this third and five, we expect the pass. They do step back. Somebody's got to be open. There it is. They get the completion, but Pat Edwards is out of bounds. Fourth and one. Bulldogs deciding to go for this. I got to say I'm a fan of the decision. Got to expect to uh, make big plays in games like this against, you know, the defending national champs, and they get it done there. Run up the middle while we brought pressure, get some five more. Got to figure out the run stop here. 12 seconds left in the first quarter. This one's out towards the edge. Will Phillips and Smith are there to get the tackle. Again, giving up a couple of yards. And that's going to be the end of our first quarter. So we have the lead, uh, but we should. And it should be bigger. 
I gotta say at this point, I'm not incredibly impressed with the way the team has played. Defense needs to get off the field here. Uh, and then we just need to start figuring some stuff out on offense, especially passing the ball. Well, we'll just keep trying to blitz them to death here, I think. Second and seven. Looks like it's going to be a handoff. It is, and they're just going to get back to the line of scrimmage. He did get a stiff arm, but then got tackled. Durham Finch, the one getting in there to finish the job. And now third and seven in our territory. They're going to step back to pass. Quarterback on the run, and he gets sacked. Oh, you love to see it. David Wilson, the newbie at the position, gets it done. If you're going to replace Sidney McRae, and especially I think he's even wearing his number, you got to make sure you get those tackles. That's going to bring up the pump formation now for Mississippi State. Not willing to go for it, I guess, on 4th and 12. Even though I think that you probably should. This one looks like it's pretty much landing in the end zone. We'll take the touchback, and let's see if the offense can maybe complete a pass or two. I'm sure their defense is feeling pretty confident. Safety not playing up as we come out in the eye, and we will just run it up the middle. Mike Fontaine trying to look a little bit for the edge. Just gets taken down at the line of scrimmage. I am genuinely worried about uh, our running game against some of the better opponents that we will face this season. Marquise is going deep on this second and 10. And I'm going to throw it up for him. We'll see. 99 speed and acceleration. He can get under it in stride, and he's gone. Not going to catch him. Just like that, it's 80 yards downfield, and we strike for the second time. Only Radon's second completion of the day, but that was a beautiful pass as he's getting hit. And so uh, only Marquise was ever going to get to that one. Okay. Well, NC State has beaten Alabama in week one, so they might drop even further in the rankings. And we will be kicking this one into the wind, expecting a touchback. Yeah, Frederick has it. Uh, pretty much out of the back of the end zone. So defense, another chance to get a stop for us early in this one. All righty. Opening up with a little blitz. They're going to run, trying to bounce it towards the edge. And there's Kale Mackey. His first big hit. It's a tackle for loss. I'm definitely expecting big things from him this season. And now I'm expecting a pass on this second and 11. It looks like they will step back. Not bringing a whole lot of pressure. Kind of left the running back open. Uh, we knew we had him covered, but we didn't want to get too aggressive. Now we've got a uh, third and 11. I'm going to go try to go with a little cover for us. See if we can defend like an out route here. And no, they're going to go with the draw play. So, oh my gosh, and it's going to work. How did we give up 12 yards on a draw? Oh, we might have hurt the running back, but that's disappointing. I think that is legitimately embarrassing. All right. Well, another first down for Mississippi State. Another run, it looks like. And... Couple more yards for him as well. Damian Carpenter, I think the fullback goes for four. Give him a couple of different looks here while we continue to bring the pressure. This one a run. Kale Mackey misses. Jenkins gets him to stumble down. Oh, I got lucky that wasn't a miss. This is kind of embarrassing the way that our team is playing at uh, times so far this game. Not you would like, not what you would like to see. That one completed almost for a first down. 100% expecting them to run it on this one. Second and inches. We're bringing the blitz. Uh-oh. I got burned over the middle. Couldn't recover in time. Even as quick as Jenkins is. And they're inside the red zone. Nothing to blame but our poor play and my bad user right now as they march down inside the red zone. Looking to throw. I see it too late. And it's a first and goal now for Mississippi State. This is some actually terrible defense on this drive so far. They're going to hand it off on first and goal. And thankfully... There's the three-yard loss. Oh, John Taylor gets in there. 99 overall. You expect him to have a pretty big impact on the game. Question's going to be, can we actually get it done here? Second and goal now, man. Comes in motion. See if Riley can get there. It's an option out towards the edge. The pitch is there. Sandcastle is not going to be quick enough. And it's an all-too-easy touchdown run for Mississippi State. They make it a one touchdown game once again with 234 left in the half. And you better believe the defense is running a couple of laps after that performance. Definitely not what we expect. Marquis trying to return. Looking for the answer. It's not going to be there. We get across the 25 again, but they kicked it in the middle of the field. and That's kind of where I do the worst. Well, they know to watch out for Marquis now. Will they be able to stop it? They're bringing some pressure. I'm throwing it up for him. 
We're going to turn into one of those teams. Oh, it's in his hands, but just not far enough downfield for him to get the separation. So they're able to get the stop on first down. We'll look to the air once again on second and 10. And let's see outside the pocket. B may be open. Can we force this one? Why? Malcolm Williams comes down with it through the contact into opponent's territory here. I'm going to go ahead and throw in a little run here. Give it to Mike Fontaine on the counter. Try to utilize some of the blocking and, uh, you know, keep the defense honest as we go below two minutes. We've got a second and one as we'll look to throw the ball once again. I wanted to throw... Wow, that's really frustrating. I hit my buttons too quick. So we throw a pick and it might be a pick six. I wanted to throw to Y. I hit Y and then hit B to switch to the receiver and he threw it to the B receiver. So Radon gets his first interception. Mississippi State has a chance to tie it before the half and they get the ball to start the third quarter. Well, now I'm tilted. Uh, I don't think I'm going to play well while I'm tilted. We'll see. Trying to bring the safety blitz. They go over the middle. That's a one-play touchdown. Nothing to say there. Really, really frustrating. They shouldn't have had the ball. Stupid that the interception gets thrown. And that's not a good return either. Now we're pretty much at the 15-yard line. Let's see. Is this just going to be a, a complete implosion? Or can I figure something out? Outside the pocket. Let's just scramble. What's the point in throwing the football? It's not working well for us. Meanwhile, Radon has over 100 yards rushing already. So I just don't see why we should do anything other than that. This is a touchdown. Okay, maybe not. <laughs> this dude covered Marquis really well. He still comes down with the ball. He stays in bounds, but uh, good coverage. We still have to be a bit worried about the clock on this one. As again, we'll step back. Kind of looking for Malcolm Williams. He's open. Will he stay open? He will, and he'll hold on through the contact. Malcolm, uh, a couple of really nice catches. We do answer back. We get the lead again. There's still a minute, and if our defense has proven anything, it's that Mississippi State will likely store again here. So let's see what they can do. Kicking this one high so that they return it. Trying to let the wind push it downfield, and the return. Oh, my gosh, not good. Ooh, they were close to getting free there. Well, can we do anything to slow him down here? I would love a turnover, although I certainly won't expect it. Quarterback gets sacked right away. We're going to be taking our timeouts. Let's see if we can force the three and out. At what point does the superior talent start to win out? This one going to be a run. And Kale Mackey will get the tackles. We'll take the timeout with 44 seconds left. Hoping, hoping that we can get the stop on third down. Another run out towards the edge. He cuts it back. There's the tackle from Kale Mackey, and we will get the timeout off with 40 seconds left. So they're not going to elect to go for it in pretty dangerous position, but they're going to put the ball to uh, Marquise Jackson. We all know how that goes. Uh, maybe enough time for at least us to get in a field goal range, if not more than that. A little bit of lead blocking for Marquise, and okay, we're starting with 28 seconds across midfield here. That's not the most impressive uh, we've seen, but it worked pretty well. How about this one? That's the running back maybe wide open. Back of the end zone, a bad throw from Marquise, and it's over his head. I don't know why he threw that so close to the corner of the end zone. Throw it a little bit more towards the uh, post, and your running back's like wide open. Regardless, 20 seconds now, second and 10. Again, looking deep, having to throw it quick over the middle. There's Malcolm Williams just as he's making his cut. He's 27 yards downfield. Get the spike off. And we've got 15 seconds with the clock stopped. I think Marquise is the guy to throw to here. Jammed up at the line. He'll have the one-on-one. -on -one. We'll see. Where does the safety go to? Goes to that side. Marquise, maybe a risky one. <laughs> I'm throwing such terrible passes right now. Oh, how do we not have like four picks? Honestly, a little bit disgusting. Uh, maybe looking for Malcolm again. 11 seconds left. I would take a field goal here, but I don't want it. And they say Malcolm Williams scored. I think he's out of bounds. Let's hope that they don't review this. Able to get this point after off. And we're safe. Review can't hurt us now. I really do think he was out of bounds, though. 
All right, because I'm tilted, we're going to try something uh, some people who may be back in the day watching us on Twitch saw. Uh, we're going to go for the onside kick with a specific purpose. And it's not necessarily to recover that onside kick, but it's to bait them into kicking an incredibly long field goal to see if we can maybe get a kick six out of it. So it's worked. They've come out in the field goal formation. Now, if their kicker's really good, which actually, I, I think about it, he might actually be really good, but the win's against them. Okay, well, that just makes me look stupid. <laughs> uh, I forgot they had a really good kicker on the team. That was one heck of a bomb. Uh, typically, you know, they're short. We get a chance to return it. I guess we still do get that chance to return it, but it's <laughs> not necessarily how we expected it to work. Uh, Marquis returning the ball, getting some good blocks, and well, this might have been worth it. One man to beat in a foot race, cuts it back. Uh, that dude just broke physics to get the tackle. Are you kidding me? Oh, it almost turned into a 900 IQ play. We were five head for a second there. Instead, we just kind of lessened our lead as we go into the locker rooms. For halftime, we'll give them the ball. I don't like that. Uh, offensively, our passing has been kind of bad. A uh, little bit scared about the running game with uh, anything other than Radon. And defensively, they started really strong and then just forgot what they were doing for a little bit. But they ended okay as well. Uh, we should win this no matter what. I think the only reason we don't come away with a victory out of this game is probably if I keep making stupid passing decisions and they actually start to intercept them. So let's see what we can do trying to shut these guys down in this second half. We're going to bring him in in motion. I'm expecting a run, but they go to the air. And again, we let them throw it out to the running back so we can just absolutely obliterate him behind the line. That is a big boom that we just brought on that one. How about on the second down? Will they go to the air again or will they hand it off? Up the middle, we were bringing the pressure and Will Phillips gets a great tackle to stop that one. And now it's third and long. Uh, we aren't really set on defense. They're going to go play action. Ah, they just made a bad throw. Uh, I was taking a long time to choose my play in the hurry up, but it ends up working out. Gives us uh, another fourth and five. I mean, their quarterback, eight of ten, but... Having a pretty good game. Just maybe not making the right read there. And again, we will probably have pretty good field position. Barring another penalty. Uh, come on. Get around the quarter, Marquise. That's nice. That's real nice. No penalties there. 42-yard return. We're in their territory to start a drive again. And at this point, we have a pretty solid lead, I'd say. We have the ball and a good chance to score. So we're going to start running Mike Fontaine a little bit more. Oh my gosh, and seeing what the freshman can do. Mike just mowed him down there. That was beautiful. 12 yards right up the middle for Mike as again we go up uh, the middle and we get seven. I want to say Mike was uh, power back and he's shown it so far. I guess that's what happens when you get the number one running back in his recruiting class onto your team. He can do some work as a true freshman that time finding a gap. But maybe the gap was there for... Uh, an illegal reason, a little holding, called on the offense there. Of all people, it's a wide receiver getting called for it. And speaking of a holding, uh, somebody had made a comment earlier in a video about uh, us maybe changing some penalty stuff, make it a little bit more realistic. We might do that. We might up or down a couple of the different penalties. I'm not sure what yet. If you have your own ideas about what should be called more or less, uh, let me know. Obviously, we do see a lot of clippings, but uh, maybe not a crazy amount of holdings. Who knows? Mike Fontaine having a great game so far. 10 carries for 40 yards. We haven't used him a whole lot, and we won't use him on this play. Our second string running back is J.J. Barr, and he's getting his first carry. So a lot of power running uh, this season, it looks like, as we try to get him out towards the edge, but he gets kind of caught up in a weird spot and only gets a yard feel like there's no reason not to just keep running the ball at this point, though. They're bringing pressure. Gets caught up, though. And JJ's almost at the goal line. Nine yards up the middle there. That was just beautiful blocking, honestly. Third and one gives us a chance to give it to him one more time, though, as we will go up the middle with the fullback dive. Uh, expecting a touchdown, and that's exactly what we get. All right. Well, we might have given him a, three, a free three points at the end of the half, but... 
We've gained that and more back as it's 35 to 17. And I would say at this point, we've made a decent start into our time as an SEC team. Good chance to go 1-0 in conference. Quarter and a half left to play. Mississippi State will take the field again. And over the middle, oh my gosh. I don't know how we didn't get to that ball. They find Derek Gibbs for 20 yards. I'm impressed with the pass. Worked better than I expected. This is an option out towards the edge. And that's Durham Finch getting the tackle, not leaving back the opportunity to pitch the ball out. Just get them into a quick second and long. This might not be the smartest play, but we're bringing the safety blitz again on second and 13, kind of expecting the pass, but they do run it kind of out towards the edge. Will Phillips is there. And again, we stop him at the line of scrimmage. Our coverage maybe has suffered in a couple of spots so far this game, but uh, honestly, we've done a really good job tackling. Nobody really breaking anything egregious so far. There's another fourth down for us. We get them on the first contact. So again, you know, we got to take all of this game with a grain of salt since we're against uh, 86, 85 overall uh, Mississippi State team, but I'm definitely happy with the way it's going so far. Now to win the Heisman, we would probably want to uh, run the stats up of our two guys who are going for the award. But early in this season, I want to avoid some injuries and we're going to start to burn the clock and run the ball quite a bit, I think, to get out of this game as early as possible. We've pretty much only run for the past like 10 plays. So we are going to throw in another pass here and who knows, maybe it's, oh no. This safety's coming on the blitz. Marquise. Oh no, that's going to be picked. Ah! What am I doing today? That should be five interceptions against us, I think, at this point. Instead, right on uh, four touchdowns to only one pick. A lot different than what I think it should be. Trying the play action. We'll get outside the pocket. Wide open. We hit Chad Bradshaw on the run, and Chad has the space to just get downfield almost to the 50. That's a good throw from right on on the run. That's not something I necessarily expect from him. He's able to get it right into the bread baskets, and, well, we have gotten to the end of the third quarter. Comfortably in control of this game, I'd go so far as to say uh, another touchdown for sure would put it away, but we'll start burning the clock on this fourth and get out of here with a win. Just going to continue to hand the ball off to the freshman, get him as many reps early, and he's showing a little bit of speed there as he breaks another tackle. 14 yards. I'm a big fan of Mike. Certainly doing better than I had expected is the defensive end. A little bit out of position there. Go with the read option. Radon's going to keep it. Doesn't really have the blocking. Can't make the safety miss. Took a hit. I don't like that. How about uh, one of the plays that I think were added with the revamped mod? Call it the Husky Toss. And Mike doesn't really have any blockers. <laughs> He's going to get just eaten alive. For a loss of three there in the backfield. I've never really enjoyed toss plays in this game, uh, but I figured I'd give it a shot as we will go with another run on third and seven. It's a long ways to go on the counter, especially. But Mike breaks a tackle. He's going to pick up another block. And just like that, getting some stiff arm cheese. Oh my gosh, every yard just getting down to the 12 yard line there. 14 carries now for 77 yards. I got to keep mentioning it because I think it does matter. And again, this isn't a great team, but the running that we've seen from Mike has been really impressive. It's definitely uh, lessened some of my worries for this season. JJ Barr, obviously no slouch either. So uh, while we might not have the speed or the overalls that we had last year with Braden and CJ, we might be able to pick up where we left off. At least to a certain extent. Uh, usually we'd give JJ the handoff here. We're going to give it to Mike on the uh, halfback dive instead of the fullback dive here on this first and goal with two and a half minutes to play. And Mike, you know, we just got to give him that early touchdown. He's earned it so far in this game. So we can make it 42 to 17 now. As I got to assume that Mississippi State isn't going to get crazy and... Try to run hurry ups or pass the ball a whole lot here. One of the worst teams in the country, according to the preseason rankings. Uh, you know, they probably didn't expect to come in here and win this game. They will step back to throw and Will Phillips gets there immediately, but a good catch from Eric Mixon. 
And I was wrong. Passing in the hurry up is exactly what we're getting out of Mississippi State. Kind of a shame. Uh, second and five. I'm expecting the run. Will we see it? No. It's a little screen with nobody to block for him out there. And, well, he only lost three yards. It could have been worse, though. So our defense has got us into another third and pretty long situation here. Seven yards to go for Mississippi State. We only wrought three on the rush. And this one is... Gonna be one of those annoying plays where it's just so ridiculously hard for me to cover it with my user. And they just throw it right through me, essentially. Three-man rush, just not enough to get pressure on the quarterback. He had all the time in the world to pick that one up as they throw mid-screen and lose a couple more yards. I would really love it if we could keep them below 20 points. We'll see if that can actually happen. As they will step back to pass once again and over the middle... Another completion, but again, we're getting these tackles. They're not breaking them as they are going to start taking timeouts. Are you kidding me? Well, they've injured one of their players a little bit, so uh, maybe they deserve it. What can we do? Third and three trying to bring some pressure. It doesn't really get there, and well, they get the first down inside the red zone. They get out of bounds to stop the clock. Running out of space to hold them to that, uh, you know, below 20 points that we wanted. Thankfully, they're going to run the ball before they take their second time out there. Just need to hold for a little bit longer. Second and 10. They're going to run the option out towards the edge, and the quarterback's going to lose four yards. They won't take the time out, and the clock will run here, I think. So third and 14, 30 seconds to go. I love an interception here. They're going to run the ball now. Interesting decision, and I'm assuming they'll kick the field goal as well. Okay, I know nothing about this Mississippi State team because apparently they're going to go for it. Fourth and 11 with less than 20 seconds to play in a game where you're down like three plus scores and they're going to throw it into the end zone and it's a turnover on downs. I don't know who it was that got there. I don't think it was Kale Mackey. I think it might have been Aaron Jenkins or no, Smith. Wow, somebody got in there and broke that one up beautifully. Perfect timing. So the defense comes out and does fantastic. And you know what? Just because they were being so rude, we're going to send Marquise and Malcolm deep on one more pass. We'll see. Oh, well, there's Malcolm Williams deep downfield. Just to rub it in their face. You know, if you want to play like that, we can play like that as well. Run the clock out and let Malcolm get into the end zone. Tie in a school record for receiving touchdowns in a game. Making Radon look a little bit better. 335 yards passing now. And, uh, you know, they brought it on themselves. Beautiful play, though. Beautiful play. So we can kick this extra point. And we can end the game 49 to 17. Uh, we have uh, dimension shifting flags. So don't, don't be too worried about that. It's just a, a major at the university they've been working on. Uh, okay, pretty good game. Pretty good game. Uh, we had a couple of turnovers, which is bad for us. An interception and a fumble. We were lucky not to have two fumbles, and we were lucky not to have, like, five interceptions. But Radon does get player of the game. 9-16 passing. A whole heck ton of yards. Uh, and we get our first win in this conference and in this new stadium. It's always nice to be able to put away teams that you definitely should be uh, beating pretty handily. Uh, in this case, we kind of took the lead, never looked back. I think, what, they tied it up, didn't they? Uh, at some point there in the second quarter, but then we just kind of blew them out. Gave up 17 points in the second quarter, including the free three points we gave them at the end of the half. But at the end of the day, 49 to 17, we kind of blow them out. 217 on the ground, 335 through the air, controlled the ball the whole time. We give up two turnovers, but held them to 40 rushing and 194 passing. So all in all, a pretty good one. Radon, 9-16, 335 passing uh, for five touchdowns and had nine carries for another 113 yards. Only kind of negative spot was a couple of weird passes. Uh, uh, a lot of passes that should have been picked off and one that did. All in all, we get it done. We move to 1-0, and and now we can just advance to uh, the next team from Mississippi. I guess we'll go state by state here as we'll look to take on Ole Miss in week two. So already getting a decent amount of XP, which is nice. The quicker we can level up, the better. 
We stay at number five. Ole Miss was able to beat their first team. They're only a B plus uh, overall school. Who did they have to play there in their first week? They played South Carolina and won at 35 to 21. So uh, that doesn't mean a whole lot for us yet, but we know that they're able to win games and they're able to score some points. So maybe a little bit to worry about. We know they were relatively highly ranked, but I think that we have a team that should be able to get the wins. Uh, only thing we'll check before uh, the end of the episode is this, and we can see, yeah, Radon and uh, Marquise didn't change. Uh, in fact, most of the Heisman board didn't change. Steven Ostrander comes up, the uh, quarterback from Georgia. Redshirt Jr., we're going to have to deal with him at some point this season. In fact, uh, Steven there is apparently the NCAA Offensive Player of the Week. Now, I know Radon had an interception, but he had way more passing yards on fewer completions. He had more rushing yards, and he had more touchdowns. Uh, but okay. Start the disrespect early. I like it. At this point, we should be all too familiar with said disrespect, but we'll get our chance to take on Georgia, and I'm sure that we'll do just fine. Unfortunately, though, that's going to have to be the end of this episode. If you enjoyed it, please feel free to hit the like button. And throughout the season, I'm curious if anybody can guess the next team that we're going to. So far, I've seen a decent amount of guesses and none of them are right. I don't even know if any of them are in the correct conference. So I'm curious uh, who it is that's going to be able to make the correct guess. I don't know if I'm willing to give you hints. Maybe maybe every week I'll give a new hint, but uh, I'll just say this. There are not a top five team. I'm sure that narrows it down quite a bit. Uh, while you're down there liking the video, please, if you enjoy the content, you want to be notified when new videos do get posted, feel free to hit the subscribe button and then head to the description where you can find links to my Twitch at twitch.tv slash goonmaster, as well as links to my Twitter and our community Discord as well as a link to the college football revamp mod if you're trying to get it for yourself. All that being said, thank you guys so much for watching. Glad that we're uh, able to kick off this season with a win. But regardless, my name is Goonmaster. You guys are the TL Boys. And wherever you are, have a good night or have a good morning. And we'll see you later. Adios.